Good morning. This is Prophetess Dr. Sandra Ingram from the Rebuilding the Walls Ministry. Thank you for joining us on today because this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful Thanksgiving and we all have something to be thankful for. You know, and that is that the Lord Jesus suffered, bled, and died on the cross that we might have a right to eternal life. So we are grateful for God in everything that he has done for us. So today, once again, there is a word from the Lord. So if this message helps you and blesses you we're asking you to subscribe hit that like button and leave a comment if you need prayer we'll be so happy to pray for you so we thank you for joining us on today may the word of god bless you so father god right now in the name of jesus we come thank you for your son Jesus that suffered, bled, and died on the cross, that we may have a right to eternal life. We are thankful for every blessing that you has restored upon us. God, we thank you for bringing us through last week with all its ups and downs. But God, but most of all, we thank you for blessing our homes and our families, God. And we pray, God, for this nation and this world in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for the bereaved on today, God. Lord, we pray for those that are sick and in hospitals or nursing homes, God. We just ask you to bless them and keep them, God, in the name of Jesus. And most of all, God, we ask you for your deliverance, God. And we repent right now in the name of Jesus for everything and anything that we have done or participated in that was not like you. Wipe out slates clean on today, God. Renew, God, creating us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. We thank you. We praise you. We magnify you. In Jesus' name, we pray. So today, um, the topic is, are you a movement or a monument for the work of the Lord? Which one? are you? And our scripture will be coming out of Col Colossians 1, so 9 through 14. So if you have your Bibles, get your Bibles out and join us with the reading of the word. And so we'll start with Colossians 1 and 9. We have not stopped. Now, this is Paul praying to the people in Colossia, okay? And he says, we have not stopped praying for you since the first day we heard about you. In fact, we always pray that God will show you everything he wants you to do and that you may have all the wisdom and understanding that the spirit gives. So what is, what's Paul saying right here? He said, we pray for you that God will show you everything he wants you to do. But in order for God to show you everything he wants you to do, you have to be able to see, hear, and listen to God. You have to be able to know the voice of God. So God can show you, but if you're not looking at him and if you don't have a relationship with him, then you won't see what he's showing you. If you don't know how to hear his voice, then you won't hear him when he's talking to you so that's why we're praying but remember god can do all that he can for us but we have to do some things for ourselves we have to get in that right space with god we got to have relationship with him we got to read his word we got to study his word we got to know who he is he is and and listen to what he's telling us so paul is saying to these people okay we pray for you and i'm praying for you that you would get in right relationship with god 
so that he can not only tell you, but you can hear and obey what he wants you to do. And he said that you may have all the wisdom and understanding that the spirit gives. And we know we need wisdom, we need knowledge, and most of all, we need understanding of what the Lord is saying. And once again, we do that through relationship with him, with loving up on him and praying with him, not to him. And the difference is when you pray with him, there is a conversation going on. You talk, you listen, he talks, you listen. You're not paying to him. God, give me this. God bless them. God bless it. And then you stop and listen. So remember, whenever you have that conversation with God and you pray with God, take a moment to stop and listen after you pray so that you can hear what God is telling you. Colossians 1 and 10 says, then after we pray that you hear and do the will of God and that you ask for wisdom and knowledge. He said, then you can live a life that honors the Lord and you will always please him by doing good deeds. Because if you're living in relationship with the Lord, then you're going to be a kingdom citizen and you're going to be doing kingdom works and you're going to be doing it the way God would do it not the way you want to do. And you will always please him by doing good deeds. You will come to know God even better. And that's what it's all about. It's about knowing God better and getting closer to him and doing his will and what he wants for our lives. His glorious power will make you patient and strong enough to endure anything, and you will be truly happy. So now, verse 11 says, his glorious power. You know, God already has the power and authority to do what he wants, because he was given that, uh, he, the, he gave that to Jesus, and so God had, and he gave it to Jesus, and Jesus gave it to the disciples, and Jesus gave us the authority and the power to do what he did, and even greater works, but it didn't say it. Said, it didn't say it in His power. It says His glorious power. So we talked about glory on uh, the other week, and the glory of God. That is how God thinks, how He walks, how His radiance, how it shines out. His spirit shines because of how He walks with us and talks with us, and, and what He does. That is the glory of God. When Moses went up to the mountain to get the Ten Commandments, the word says that the glory was on the mountain. Moses went up into the glory. And I'm telling you, when you get into the glory of the Lord, the glory, in the presence of the glory, the glory gets in you and the glory will shine through you. That's why the word can say, let your light so shine that, you know, you can be a light, a beacon of light, and it's, what, it's not your light that's shining, it's the glory of God that's shining in you, and that glory, and when Moses came down off that mountain, he had been in the presence of the glory of God, his face shone so bright, they had to put something over it because they couldn't look at it, and that's what we should be. I strive to be his glorious power. Get the glory, that glory that'll make you live right. The glory that'll make you walk right. The glory that'll make you talk right. And it'll make you patient. And it'll make you strong. And the power and the glory of God will make you so strong. You can endure anything. You can endure hardness as a good soldier. And you know what? Not only will you be able to do it, you'll be happy while you're enduring it. Verse 12, I pray that you will be grateful to God for letting you be a part of what he has promised his people in the kingdom of life. So if he promised you his glorious power, then his kingdom of light, the who he is, his essence will live within you and you will be grateful and thankful that you are a vessel worthy of of honoring the glory and the light of God. And that's what God promised us. God rescues us, verse 13, from the dark power of Satan and brought us into the kingdom of his dear son. 
And you know what? He forgives our sins and set us free. That's what it's all about. We repenting and God forgiving us and set us free from the kingdom of darkness. So I'm asking you again, are you going to be a movement or are you going to be a monument? This is what he's saying. What are you going to do? God has done all this for you. What are you doing for the Lord? God rescued you. He forgave you. He set you free. And uh, you know what? James 4 and 17 says, therefore, him that knoweth to do and do it not is sin. So you know to do. You've prayed. You've asked God. You know how to live. You know how to act. And if you don't do that, then you are sin. And sin separates us from God. So you can't be a monument with sin in your life. You can only be a movement. Then it says, when we ask for knowledge, and God says, if any man that knowledge, to ask for it. So why we ask for knowledge? Knowledge is not worth anything if it does not lead you to a changed life and to be a better person. So the knowledge of God and who he is and the glory of him and the power of him that resides is that knowing that he saves, delivers, and sets free. That's the knowledge. Knowing him on a level where you are intimate with God. And when you, this includes knowing and hearing the word of God. And you know what? Not just hearing and knowing the word of God, but knowing that spiritual aspect of God, understanding the word, knowing who he is and why he is. And knowledge is open to anyone who asks. All we have to do is pray for it. And we do it and we have it because it teaches us how to love others. That's what we're here for. The harvest is right, but the laborers are few. So that relationship that we need to God for you to be a movement and not just a monument. There is power in relationship with God. And the Holy Spirit is what makes you a movement and not a monument. And remember, a movement is always active. You doing, you come into relationship, you're praying, you're worshiping God, you're reading his word, just not just reading it, you're studying his word, you're applying his word, you are God's mouthpiece, your hands, your feet, your mouth, your eyes, everything, your whole temple is dedicated to God. And you move and act in ways that help others and bless others. That's what you are when you are a movement. When you're a monument, you're just standing in. You're looking good, but you ain't no good. You have no power. You have no authority. The birds come by and poop on monuments because they don't move. People hang dirty clothes on monuments because they don't move, because they don't think they have value. You have value. And remember, a monument can't speak. It's silent. It can't do anything. So choose you this day who you're going to serve. Choose you this day. Are you going to be a movement for God? Are you going to be a monument? Because remember back in Matthew, when Jesus saw the big tree and he went up to get some food for it, and it didn't have any fruit, and he cursed the fruit tree. Why? Because it was looking like it had fruit, and it did not. Choose you. Don't be a monument. Don't be a fig tree. Just looking good, but not any good. And just then, then and you know what? On the, what makes you a monument is you look good on the outside, but on the inside, you're empty, and you're dirty, and you're unclean, and you have no power. So remember, if you're a monument, make up your mind. This is the last day I'll be a monument. Uh, a monument. From now on, I'm going to be a mover and a shaker for Christ. So uh, Joshua 24, 15 says, and it seems evil to you to serve the Lord. If it does, Choose you this day who you will serve. 
whether you're going to serve the little G-O-D-S of your fathers, are you going to serve uh, the other, the G-O-D-S that was on the other side of the flood, or the God of the Amorites, in whose land you live? But you know what Joshua said? But for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to be movers and shakers for the Lord. So it doesn't matter where you come from, where your heritage is, what other people did. You be a movement for God. You be a, a movement, a shaker for God, a shaker for the kingdom of God. So we thank God for the word of God on today. And we hope that it has blessed you. And we pray that you choose you this day who you're going to serve. We pray that you choose today to be a movement and not a monument in the work of the Lord. Thank you for listening on today. Be blessed. This is Dr. Sandra Ingram with the Rebuilding the Walls Ministry, and we are praying for you. Yes, we are praying for you. And we, if you have any requests, please leave it in the comments. And once again, please subscribe to the channel, like the channel, and we will see you all next week. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and thy redeemer. And may this word fall on firm ground. To God be the glory.